You can also like, exit configuration mode with the use of some keyboard shortcuts. If you remember when you get into configuration mode, there's uh, Cisco iOS has a line that says like enter uh, configuration commands one line at a time, exit with control Z. What that means is that it, if you hit the your control key and then your Z key at the same time that it will exit you out of configuration mode and into privilege exec mode which is nice because it's um, basically a keyboard shortcut for the end command. So regardless of what sub mode that you're in, in this case we're in interface configuration mode, we'd have to type exit twice to get out, or we could type end to get directly out. But here if we just hit control and Z, we go back to privilege exec mode. And what's interesting is it does it leaves this little caret and capital Z on your terminal line it does not show up in the running config. Control C is very much like Control Z, but with one important difference that we're going to see in the next slide. So same deal here, we're in interface configuration mode. I hit my control key and my C key at the same time, and I am put back out into privileged exec mode. Uh, you'll notice that there are no characters displayed here. We don't get the caret and the capital Z. There is a very important difference between these two commands. They're both keyboard shortcuts for the end command, but there is a very important difference in the way that Cisco iOS treats these two keyboard shortcuts, which I have to admit I was not aware of before I did research for this lesson and we'll see that in the next slide. This is the big difference between the two keyboard shortcuts for exiting configuration mode. If you use control Z at the end of a command line in which a valid command has been typed, that command will be added to the running configuration file. Let me repeat that. That command will be added to the running configuration file. In other words, using control Z is equivalent to hitting the enter carriage return key before exiting. For this reason, it is safer to end your configuration using the end command. Alternatively, you can use the control C key combination to end your configuration session without sending a carriage return signal. So let's take a look at this in action. In this case, we're in global configuration mode. We go into interface configuration mode. And a description is a command that you can use in interface configuration mode basically just adds a like it says a description it's just really simple documentation that stays persistent in the running configuration so in this case uh, description space and then the actual string which contains the description and I've got don't add this description so I'm typing this in I'm like oh whoa I don't want this let me get out of configuration mode so I hit control Z just a real quick aside here it says you can use the end command or the exit command basically you can't uh, you can from command prompt, but once you issue a valid command, in this case description and then the space, Cisco iOS is only going to accept arguments that are related to that command. So in this case, it would just see end or exit as a string, and it would either choke on it. Well, in this case, it wouldn't. It would take it as a string because that's what it's expecting. Uh, but you won't be able to use the end or exit command 99.9% .9 of the time when you've already issued a configuration command. Hope that didn't throw you off of what I was showing you here. But anyways, what I want to do is I want to get out of configuration mode and I do not want to apply this description. So I hit control Z. I go back out to privilege exec mode. Everything looks great. From here, I can issue the show running and run is just short for running configuration interface serial zero slash zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to show me the current running configuration. That's the configuration that's being used for this interface. And when I see this, I don't want to see that description, but I do. So what happened here was that this acted like a combination of keystrokes. It acted as an enter and then end. So it took the configuration that I didn't want it to have and then exited me out of configuration mode and into privilege exec mode. This was not the behavior that I expected. And with the description, no harm, no fall. You know, it's just a little description there. If this had been an IP address, a um, shutdown command, you know, something similar to that, this can cause a big problem. So you need to be aware that control Z after a valid command will execute that command. And again, in Cisco devices, as soon as you execute a valid configuration command, it gets applied. So the way to go about this is to use the control C keyboard shortcut instead. So in this case, same, same scenario, we get to the description. I'm like, oh crap, I don't want this get me out of here. I hit control C. I get pushed back into privilege exec mode. Now when I take a look at the running configuration for interface 0 0 slash 0, I see that that description has not been applied. So it's very important to recognize the difference between these two keyboard shortcuts because <laughs> the first one, the control Z, could get you into a world of trouble here. Uh, honestly, before I researched this for this lesson, I didn't know the difference. So I think I'm going to start practicing what I preach here and using control C going forward. 
ROM monitor mode, or as it's better known, the dreaded ROMMON mode. Now Cisco doesn't really consider this a CLI mode, but I did want to show this to you because even though you don't want to see this mode ever in your uh, career, you will see it. ROM on mode is a separate mode that's used when your router cannot boot properly. Uh, if your device does not find a valid system image, which is your Cisco IOS when it's booting, the system will enter ROM mon mode. Uh, you can also invoke this by interrupting the boot sequence during the startup of a device. You can do this by sending a break character. Uh, check your documentation for your specific platform to find out how to do this. And basically what's going to happen is the device is going to load a very, very limited version of Cisco IOS. Basically an emergency version, super lightweight, that it will use. And generally when you see ROM mon mode, it means some bad juju's happened. That's why you don't want to see this, but you do want to see it. Because you're eventually going to run into this and you want to know how to use it in a rudimentary level at least, and you also don't want to poop your pants when you see it. ROM mon is outside the scope of this lesson. There's a uh, password recovery lesson for all types of ROM mon fun, and take it from somebody who once spent a considerable chunk of time doing password recoveries on a couple hundred 2500 routers. I am more than aware of ROM mon mode, but I did want to show it to you because it will pop up, and like I said, you don't want to be surprised by it or not understand what it is. So here's what ROM mon mode looks like on a 2851. It gets the name ROM mon because of, well, you don't want to say ROM monitor mode, that's a mouthful, but also because of the prompt here, it says ROM mon. And if you see this, you will know you are in ROM mon mode, which generally means you're in trouble. ROM mon mode, you will only be able to see when you are connected through the console port of your router. You won't be able to see it from VTY. So that's the other fun part is that you usually have to have a monkey with a laptop connected to the router to troubleshoot this. As you can see here, you can still issue the question mark to get the available commands. And the commands here are different than what you're going to see in any of the other modes. And basically, ROM mon mode exists just to fix something that's broken on your router and get you back into Cisco IOS and hopefully into your user exec and privilege exec modes. You can see here that the prompt is ROM mon followed by a number and then the greater than sign. As you enter commands, for whatever reason, ROM uh, increments that number that's behind the uh, prompt. That's about as deep as we're going to go into this. Just know that this is something that you'll see in emergencies, and it's basically just a really lightweight version of Cisco IOS that is meant to hopefully get your device back into a working state. Let's wrap this sucker up. Cisco IOS has a number of CLI modes. The most important modes to be aware of are the two exec modes, which are user exec and privilege exec modes, and those are used primarily for verification and troubleshooting commands. Uh, the commands available in exec mode depend, by default, on the exec privilege level, which can range from zero, which very limited command set all the way up to 15 which is all the commands are available. User exec mode is privilege level 1 and privilege exec mode is level 15 so level 1 doesn't have a whole lot that you can do uh, think of that as like a read-only access and privilege exec mode which is level 15 is basically super user or god mode you can do everything once you get into this privilege level. The other major CLI mode is configuration mode and from privileged exec mode you can get into global configuration mode by issuing the configure terminal command. Now once you're in configuration mode there are a slew of sub configuration modes we touched on interface configuration mode. Each of these sub modes has a different set of commands that are available to it. Finally we took a look at ROM mon mode and basically if you're seeing ROM mon mode, hopefully you are recovering passwords because the other times that you're going to see it generally means that something went south. So I just wanted to show you that. Cisco doesn't consider this a CLI mode. Uh, that's debatable, but I just wanted to give you a look at it so that you were aware of its existence and were not shocked when you saw it. You should probably play with ROM mon a little bit in a lab situation. Get yourself an old router and uh, go ahead and put it into ROM mon mode. And like I said, look up the documentation for the router. If you look up the password recovery for that specific model, you should be able to invoke the ROM mon mode. Uh, there's a number of ways that you can do that. That's outside the scope of this lesson. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and pop over to the router and take a look at some of these modes in action.